everyone, Mr. Merkage here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use a track bar in order to get the value of it and use that value for a specific thing. Uh, in the example I'm going to be showing you today, I'm going to be using it as an interval for a timer um, to send things to your mood after that sort of interval. Uh, so let's drag the track bar in and get a bit familiar with it. Um, so here it is by default. So you can slide this bar, and this is what determines the value. Uh, so if we come into the properties, this thing is pretty customizable. So you can change the way it looks, you can align it vertically instead of horizontal. Uh, you can change the color and things like... I'll let you explore that for yourself in the properties, but the main thing we're going to want to be doing is using the maximum and minimum. We're going to change that, but we'll do that later on. Uh, we're going to need a timer too, and I'll just copy these two buttons because we obviously want to start and stop the timer and we actually want to get a timer. I think I might have an empty one here. Yes. So we'll use timer 5. Right, so inside timer 5 we're gonna basically want to set the mood. So we can say AX Skype 1 dot current user profile oops, I didn't type that. AX Skype 1 dot current user profile dot mood text and that is going to be equal to, let's just say 1 and if we copy this and paste it a few times and I'll change this to 2, 3 and 4 uh, the reason I'm doing a couple is so you can see the effect of it switching in Skype so obviously if we were to start that up now we'll just see 4 it, it, it'll just do it so fast we won't even see 1, 2 and 3 so obviously we want a pause in between each one so we can see it like cycling through um, there's many ways to do a pause. Uh, you can use other timers to create the pause. You can use like spe special functions um, that will make the program wait and do some like pausing. Um, but for this example, I'm going to be showing you how to use threading and putting the thread to sleep. It's not the best way to do it because it actually like it freezes your program and pauses it. So you can't use it while this is this process is happening that's why you shouldn't use it but it's a good way for me to show you how the track bar value will work so I'm, that's why I'm going to show you it so basically you type system dot threading dot thread dot sleep so we're basically putting it to sleep and usually you'd have to type in a number here in milliseconds so if you put in a thousand that's one second that's how you'd usually do it uh, but instead of putting a number this time, we just want to type trackbar trackbar one dot value like that because that that is going to store our value. So instead of putting the thousand, this will technically be the thousand or whatever number we pick. So let's copy that and paste that down between each one. Oops, I copied a blank space. So like that and let's put one at the end too so it cycles back to the one after the four um, now I just need to make sure the timer starts number five dot start and make it stop again real quick and let's launch this up now uh, that should be fine if we go to Skype um, I'm actually on my other Skype because this is going to spam Skype home. So let's head over to the tab, uh, drag this along, and press start. And let's see. Oh, actually, no, we forgot to change. Let's stop that and shut that. We forgot to change our values in the trackbar. So by default, the maximum is 10 obviously we're working in milliseconds now so 10 is pretty much nothing um, so the minimum zero we don't want that we want the minimum to at least be a second so let's just set the minimum to a thousand and maximum let's just say 10,000 for 10 seconds and you've also got to take into account the small change and the large change so basically if I left that as one and five like because it, the max is 10,000 that's 10,000 different like ticks in this we obviously don't want that so let's just say the small change can be 500 
and the large change can be a thousand like that so now we've changed that on the left this is a thousand so one second all the way to the right will be 10,000 which is 10 seconds and middle will be 5 hopefully you understand that and let's launch it up back up now right so let's head over to this tab and because it's on the left obviously that's a thousand so one second let's give it a few seconds in between and press start and we should see this going from one, two, and three, and it will just keep cycling. Like that. As you can see it's cycling and it'll it'll continue going one, two, three, four, and it will go back. Um that that is this. So look, as you can see the program's not responsive. You have to get it when it's unpaused. That's why you shouldn't use system.threading, but this is just an example. So that was that. I'll show you it going fast. Let's press start. So that's doing it every second now. As you can see, I can press stop, and you have to sort of spam it if you want to stop it uh, because it's to sleep. So you want to actually find a different way. I'm not going to be covering the different way, as this is just in the like an example. Um, but I'm sure you could look up wait functions and pause functions online, and you'll find what you're looking for without having to put it to sleep. But yeah, pretty much all you want to do is use the value of it and don't forget to change the properties of the time here and this is just basically a good way to put it to use and create a mood cycler if you wanted that um, so yeah I hope you did enjoy the video if you did please leave a like and a comment and I'll see you next time